Breaking news tonight, funding for the president's border wall could be delayed until next year. The Senate has yet to vote on Mitch McConnell's proposed short-term funding bill to avoid a partial government shutdown this Friday. That bill doesn't include funding for the border wall, but both Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer say they would support the measure. If approved by Congress and the president, the bill would fund the government through February 8th, and then the dance begins all anew. Our next guest here to take up these uh, issues uh, in the efforts in the House uh, tonight to include an amendment that would include border wall funding. Congressman Jim Jordan joins us, serving on both the Judiciary and Oversight Committees, co-founder of the influential House Freedom Caucus. Congressman, great to have you with us. You bet. Uh, let, let's start with the efforts to, to fund the wall after all. No, we got to do it. And the idea that it's going to happen next year when Nancy Pelosi's running the House, I mean, it's not, I, I just don't see how it does. So we have to get it done now. The Freedom Caucus will offer two amendments in the Rules Committee tomorrow. One will say $5 billion for the border security wall. Put it on this bill now. The other one will say, let's reform our asylum laws. We've seen this whole caravan play out over the last several months. The way to address that problem is change our asylum laws. So those two things are just good common sense policies. Mm -hmm. More importantly, they're policies we told the American people we would do when they gave us the privilege to come here and serve. No one has to tell you your leadership has fought President Trump and the Freedom Caucus at every step of the way. Is there any possibility well, that they would relent? Here's, here's the frustrating thing, Lou. Back in March when they did the big omnibus bill, that oh, yeah. passed, and we all voted against it, they said, don't worry, we'll do it in September. Then we get to September, and they say, don't worry, we'll get the wall funding on December 7th. Then we get to December 7th, they say, no, 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 don't worry, we'll get it on December 21st, and we'll do this short-term bill. And here we are now, a couple days away, and we still haven't got it done. And oh, guess what? They're saying, oh, wait a minute, we're going to kick it to February 8th. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. We've got to stand firm. Everyone knows this is the right policy. Let's get it done now. Why we still have the majority. I, I, I fail to see the logic of kicking the can down the road again. And I know the American people certainly don't understand that. You call so it let's kicking the it. can down the road, Congressman. I call it outright lying. Uh, you, yeah. Your leadership has been lying to you the whole way. We should, we should pass it out. I think they're... Actually, Lou, what we should have done, instead of taking a six-day weekend, we should have passed it last week. Right after the president, in the Oval Office, told Congresswoman Pelosi when she says, oh, Mr. President, we need to negotiate this in a closed-door session, right when he said, no, Nancy, this is a good thing. It's called transparency. We need the border security wall now. That's when we should have put it on the floor. We had 219 members here last week. The Democrats have under 200 members here. I think we could have got it done last week. But we, if we, even if we couldn't get it done right away, bring people back on Monday. Let's get it done early this week so we can make the case, have the argument and debate taking place, and then send it to the Senate where there's the pressure there to ultimately do what we told the American people we were going to do. Well, the one fellow who's keeping his promises is President Trump. Uh, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he fulfills those promises uh, because the American people elected him to do just that. Uh, as you have observed for your conference uh, throughout this year. If they've been listening to Jim Jordan, uh, the, uh, the conference might not have sustained as many uh, uh, grievous losses. Lou, we lost 40 seats. We could have afforded to lose. We didn't want to lose any, but if we'd, have, if we'd have only lost 22, so if we'd have won 18 of those 40 seats, you look at the closest margins mm -hmm. in those first 18 seats, the closest races, it was only about 60,000 votes total yeah. over those 18 congressional districts. Maybe if we'd built the border security wall, maybe we would have won those seats and stayed in the majority. Or if uh, your leaderships uh, hadn't been such damn fools and fought the president uh, and instead uh, allied with him, think what uh, marvels could have, uh, could have occurred. Uh, let, me, let me turn to Elijah Cummings, the incoming, your incoming <laughs> oversight committee chairman issuing 51 letters uh, to the heads of various government agencies, yeah. the White House, Trump Organization. I, I mean, this is, uh, this is a, a bull rush well underway. Yeah, we, we knew this was coming. Remember, uh, Elijah had 64 subpoenas that he wanted to send this Congress, 64 different things. So yeah. many of these letters deal with those, what those subpoenas were about. He can't issue subpoenas yet because he's not the chairman. Uh, so, yeah, this is, this is where it's headed. And we're going to have to focus on one simple thing getting to the truth about all these issues, mm -hmm. giving the truth to the American people. I think if we do that, we'll be just fine. So, um, yeah, we need to be ready for this. 
but our, our job is the truth. Our job is to hold government accountable, do the proper oversight, but do it in a way that is truthful, factual, and fair. And uh, I, I, you didn't say just like the Republicans did over the last two years. Well, we pushed hard on some issues, but uh, frankly, we could have pushed a lot harder, particularly this FBI and DOJ issue, where they, uh, as you know, we've talked about it a lot, where they took one party's oppo research document, dressed it up, took Look. it to a secret court so they could spy on the Trump campaign. We still got answers. We got to get to those, those key questions you, and that whole scandal. Real quickly, I, we didn't even get to uh, the, the news of the day, and that is, of course, Loretta Lynch appearing before yeah. your committee. Uh, can you give us uh, your... Th didn't learn much. Yeah, di didn't learn a whole lot, Lou. Um, I mean, frankly, she didn't know a whole lot. Uh, we can't really get into the details until the transcript right. goes public. But she, uh, lots of times, she just didn't know about key players in the whole, the whole Russia investigation, you know, I, uh, key people. I have to tell you, I'm a little concerned as a, as a taxpayer. We're electing a lot of folks and, 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 and paying for a lot of government employees who have some of the worst memories I have I've ever well, encountered. Uh, th there may be something in the water there in Washington. Maybe it's the I, air. I don't know. I think in this situation, it was a lot more about what Jim Comey was up to. Remember, Jim Comey's all about Jim Comey, and he, I, I think yeah. he didn't follow the rules in so many situations. So I think it was much more a Comey holding information and controlling things versus Loretta Lynch just, just not being right. that involved. Congressman, always good to talk with you. Thanks you so bet. much. Congressman Thanks, Jim Luke. Jordan.